Well, no matter what other people think about this movie, I think we can all agree on one thing. Guns N' Roses must have gotten a very juicy paycheck from Disney. Very juicy paycheck. What is going on everybody? Welcome to Arrival Entertainment and today we are going to be talking about Thor Love and Thunder, the next entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thor Love and Thunder is the fourth standalone Thor movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It once again stars Chris Hemsworth as Thor himself, Natalie Portman as Jane Foster, and is directed once again this time by Taika Waititi. Before I continue with the review, I just want to give really quickly a huge, huge thank you to everyone who has watched my Beatles Get Back Blu-ray review, who has liked that video, who enjoyed that video, and subscribed to the channel because of that video. It really means a lot to me. I had a lot of fun making it. It's one of my most popular videos now and it's all because of you guys who have watched it and enjoyed it so thank you guys so much I really do appreciate it and just like always if you're new to the channel then welcome if you enjoy this type of content and want to see more of it then please consider subscribing to the channel and liking and sharing this video because that really helps me out Let's talk about Thor Love and Thunder. The Thor movies are an interesting bunch of movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A lot of people don't like the first two movies. I really like the first one. I don't think the first one deserves as much hate as some people give it. The second movie though, Thor The Dark World, that one's pretty bad. That one is really tough for me to get through. I've only seen the movie once and I barely got through it. So that one is legitimately bad. I will give people that one. Thor Ragnarok, however, is one of the best MCU movies. That movie is such a burst of energy that the character of Thor really needed for his movies. It was fun, it was colorful, it was funny, it was action-packed, it had great characters, great music, great soundtrack. It's one of the best MCU movies. So with Taika Waititi coming back to direct Thor Love and Thunder, the same director who did Ragnarok and the same crew, I was so excited for Thor Love and Thunder. Despite the fact that I was a little concerned about how much comedy they showed in the trailers, I was still really excited for it. And there are a lot of fun aspects to Thor Love and Thunder. You can tell by watching it that it's the same director and the same crew that did Thor Ragnarok. There's a lot of comedy in the movie, a lot of bright, colorful imagery, good action. However, with that being said, I have to admit, I was a little disappointed with Thor Love and Thunder. It's not a bad movie, like I said, there are some really great sequences in the movie, but it's just that compared to Thor Ragnarok, this movie did seem like a little bit of a step backwards. And I mentioned a little bit ago that I was concerned about how much comedy they were showing in the trailers, and unfortunately, my worries came true. There are way too many jokes in this movie, if you ask me. Now, I'm not against these Marvel movies going more of a comedic route. A lot of people have mentioned concerns about that. I've been fine with it because they found a really good balance between doing comedy stuff and taking certain moments seriously. However, with Thor Love and Thunder, they go a little too much with the comedy and not all the jokes land this time around. There was not a single joke in Thor Ragnarok that didn't get a laugh out of me. Here in Thor Love and Thunder, there are quite a bit of jokes that were supposed to be gut-busting hilarious because they focused so much on it that I just didn't laugh. And that was shocking to me because Taika Waititi, the director, he's a very funny guy. He makes very funny movies. I mean, again, Thor Ragnarok. But here, it was just overkill. And because of that over-reliance of comedy in the film, the movie is very tonally unbalanced and it was pretty distracting after a while. I'll give an example. The very beginning of the movie, we meet uh, Christian Bale's character, which I'll get into him in, later on in the review. He's meeting this god character. Now, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but Christian Bale's character in the beginning is going through something very tough. You know, it's very serious. You're learning about his character, and then he meets this god character, and this god character is just throwing jokes left and right, and... It's supposed to be funny and we're supposed to laugh at it, but those two tones just didn't fit together. If you want to have a serious opening, have a serious opening. If you want to have a more comedic opening, then go a more comedic opening. But when you have those two tones that don't really fit together, it's like, how are we supposed to feel for the rest of the movie? It's very important early on that you establish the specific tone that you're going to go for with your movie, even with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And with these two tones of serious and comedy not fitting together, it was apparent that 
it was gonna be like that throughout the whole movie, and it definitely was. And unfortunately, the character that suffers the most from how much the comedy didn't work, in my opinion, is unfortunately Thor. Now, I've always loved Chris Hemsworth as Thor. He was awesome, he was funny, he was badass, and I don't even like using the word badass when describing certain things in a movie, but he was badass in the previous Marvel movies. Even in Thor Ragnarok, where it's more comedic, and he was more comedic in the movie, he found that balance of taking moments seriously and being more comedic. And he also carried that over to Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame when he became Bro Thor. But it's like Marvel took a look at Bro Thor and just doubled down on it in this movie. Thor's kind of an idiot in this movie, which you can argue he had idiot aspects in the previous movies, but here, like I said, they just doubled down on it, and I was pretty shocked to see that. He does have his moments where he's pretty cool and he's got a lot of great action in the movie, but I just was seeing Bro Thor in the movie, and that was really distracting. There's moments where he's supposed to be taking parts seriously, and I couldn't take him seriously because I was just waiting for a joke to ruin a moment. There are some moments in this movie where you're supposed to be emotional, you know, scenes are supposed to be taken seriously, and there are a lot of moments where he's supposed to be taken seriously, but I just couldn't buy into it because I was just waiting for a joke to ruin it, and quite a bit of times, a joke did ruin it. I think there are maybe two moments with Thor in the movie where he's supposed to be emotional, and we're supposed to feel emotional, and taking a moment seriously, and it worked. Other moments, it really didn't, and that was very disappointing. That balance of having more human emotions and being the funny bro guy just didn't work at all in this movie. Even though he's still entertaining to see as Thor, and he still really works as Thor, it's kind of a double-edged sword, I guess. For everyone else performance-wise, everyone does their job. Valkyrie is back in this movie, and she's just as good in this movie as she was in the previous movies. Korg is back, he's very funny and entertaining. The one I was concerned about the most is Natalie Portman back as Jane, because she wasn't in Thor Ragnarok. They said in Ragnarok that they just broke up. We do get to see in flashback form how Thor and Jane broke up, and we do get to see how Jane becomes female Thor, or Mighty Thor as they call her in the movie. And it's explained well enough, you know, it's something where it's like, okay, they, they give us an explanation, although you probably could poke holes in it, but it's, again, it's a double-edged sword. You could poke holes in it, but you can also say, well, they did give us an explanation. They could have just not done anything at all and save that for another Marvel movie, I guess. But I think Natalie Portman gives her best performance as the character in this movie. And for the first time ever, I could safely say that I cared about Thor and Jane's relationship. I didn't really care so much about it in the previous two movies, and here I thought it was better handled. Christian Bale as Gore, the God Butcher, though, is the biggest highlight of the movie. I knew he was going to be one of the best parts of the movie when he was announced that he was going to be the villain in the movie, and he's really great performance-wise. He gives the best performance of the movie. He has the best backstory. He's so menacing on screen. It was so cool to see him play a Marvel villain. I like the makeup they did with him, especially with his face. He's just a disgusting looking villain. He's super cool. He's got a lot of great moments with Thor in the movie, and he's the honestly the best part of the movie for me. There's a sequence where Thor, Valkyrie, Jane, and Korg are fighting uh, Christian Bale's gore in this like black and white moon, whatever it's called. All the color goes black and white, except for a few color spots here and there. That was my favorite part of the movie. I loved that scene so much. It was just visually striking, and it had the best action in the movie. I wanted more of that, though, in the film. Even though we do get a lot of action in the movie, and it is entertaining, that scene in the movie was just phenomenal, and I wish there was a little bit more on it. In fact, I wouldn't have mind if the whole third act of the movie took place on that moon, but it, it didn't. And like I mentioned in the intro of this video, Guns N' Roses must have gotten a huge, huge paycheck from Disney. There are a lot of Guns N' Roses songs throughout the whole movie. There's a Guns N' Roses poster that's awkwardly focused on in one scene. And one of the characters, his name is Axel, and he changed his name to Axel from this famous rock musician that he himself said that in the movie. And I'm not gonna lie, it was that was really distracting as well. I'm not a huge Guns N' Roses fan. I like a couple songs from them, but... And they picked their best songs for the movie, obviously, but um, it, it was it was really distracting. Even in the credits, there was Guns N' Roses songs, so 
yeah, Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose slash, I hope you guys got a great paycheck from Disney because they used a lot of Guns N' Roses songs here. So overall, guys, to wrap it up, Thor Love and Thunder does have a lot of entertainment, and I can tell most families and Marvel fans who have been sticking with these movies, they're going to be entertained with this movie. There are a lot of great sequences, the movie looks good, however, it the movie just overall feels like a huge step back from how great Thor Ragnarok was. The movie is definitely going for a more turn your brain off entertainment, which again, most people are going to be fine with, but in my opinion, we've seen these Marvel movies go way beyond a turn your brain off. We have seen great Marvel movies. Hell, we saw a great Thor movie with the same crew. So why are we taking a step back and just having a turn your brain off entertainment movie? That being said though, again, it's another double-edged sword. After these big Marvel movies, sometimes it is a little refreshing to see something a little bit more smaller scale, a little bit more disposable, I guess, and you, you could make that argument, and I wouldn't blame you for that. I really enjoy the Ant-Man movies, even though people don't really care about those movies all that much. I'm just stating that for another solo movie of a character that we've grown fondly over, this entry for this character just didn't really work for me overall. Again, there are entertainment aspects of it, and I do recommend seeing it. It's just nowhere near as good as I think it should have been. And unfortunately, I would say check out Thor Love and Thunder, maybe at the Redbox or on streaming. It is worth seeing, again, but it's nothing like I think the movie should have been. So, yeah, it's disappointing, but the movie's doing well money-wise and people seem to enjoy it, so I'm glad people are enjoying it. I just... I just wanted more from it. So guys, that is my review for Thor Love and Thunder. Just like always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the film down in the comments section below. And just like always guys, thank you again so much for watching. I'm gonna be doing those two videos that I mentioned last month, the top five movies that I like that everybody else doesn't, and the top five movies I don't like that everybody else likes. I'm gonna be doing those videos very soon, so look forward to that, as well as more movie reviews and more Blu-ray videos coming very soon. Again. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and share it. Subscribe right here if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, take care.